In this action-packed lesson, we'll look at the various types of SAT questions that relate to quadratic equations and review the critical skills that will help us answer these questions correctly. Like the quadratic equation itself, this video is going to be on the longer side, but I promise if you hang in with me, you'll pick up some key techniques for SAT success. There's no time to waste, so let's get to it. On the SAT, you can expect to see the following types of quadratic equations. The standard form of a quadratic equation, the fact that the coefficients of like terms must be the same on both sides of an equation, foiling, and lastly, factoring quadratic equations. Don't worry if you don't remember these now, we'll go over them in detail. First, let's recall the standard form of a quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c. When a quadratic equation is written in standard form, the coefficient of each term must be the same on both sides of an equation. Let's unpack this with an example. In this simple equation, 2 is the coefficient of x squared on the left-hand side of the equation. Therefore, the coefficient of x squared on the right-hand side of the equation must also be 2. So a must equal 2. And if 3 is the coefficient of x on the left-hand side of the equation, then the coefficient of x on the right-hand side of the equation, b, must also be 3. Lastly, since 4 is the only number or constant term on the left-hand side of the equation, then the only number or constant term on the right-hand side of the equation must be 4. We'll use this newly refreshed skill to help us solve the following SAT problem. As we read it, we'll underline the facts and circle the keywords of the question. If the quantity 2x plus 1 times the quantity 3x plus 2 equals ax squared plus bx plus c for all values of x, what is the value of a? Notice that in this equation, the right-hand side is in standard format, but the left-hand side is not. Also notice that since this question doesn't have any answer choices, this is a grid-in question. In order to solve for a, we'll need to put the left-hand side of the equation into standard quadratic form. With both sides of the equation in standard form, the coefficient of each term will be easy to recognize. This is where the four-step FOIL process comes in. FOIL stands for first, outside, inside, and last. To put the left-hand side in standard form, we'll need to multiply the two expressions in parentheses. First, multiply the first terms, 2x and 3x, which gives us 6x squared. Next, multiply the outside terms, 2x and 2, which gives us 4x. Then multiply the inside terms, 3x times 1, which gives us 3x. Finally, multiply the last terms, 1 and 2. We get 6x squared plus 4x plus 3x plus 2 on the left-hand side of the equation. Add the 4x and 3x to get 7x. Now we have an x squared term on each side of the equation, so the coefficients of the x squared terms must be equal to each other. That means that a must equal 6. Since this is the only coefficient we're asked to solve for, there's no need to find b or c. The SAT question asks, what is a? And the answer is 6. Now that we've reviewed foiling, let's look at an SAT problem that requires us to factor a quadratic equation. If x squared plus x equals 12, which of the following is a possible value of x squared minus x? Our answer choices are a, negative 9, b, 3, c, 6, and d, 9. We'll underline the facts, circle the keywords, and label the answer choices. We'll factor this quadratic in order to solve for x. To factor a quadratic, recall that we must first make the equation equal 0. We'll subtract 12 from both sides to get x squared plus x minus 12 equals 0. To factor the quadratic, we look for two numbers that will multiply to get negative 12, which is the constant, and that add up to 1, because 1 is the coefficient of x. The factors of negative 12 are 1 and negative 12, negative 1 and 12, 2 and negative 6, negative 2 and 6, 3 and negative 4, and negative 3 and 4. To factor the quadratic, we need to look for what two numbers will multiply to negative 12 and add to 1. Negative 3 and 4 do this. Writing the expression in factor form, we get the quantity x minus 3 times the quantity x plus 4 equals 0. 
Since the product of x minus 3 and x plus 4 equals 0, then either x minus 3 equals 0 or x plus 4 equals 0. To solve x minus 3 equals 0, we add 3 to both sides to get x equals 3. In solving x plus 4 equals 0, we subtract 4 from both sides to find that x equals negative 4. Let's see which of these solutions for x can be found in the answer choices. If we try x equals negative 4, we see that the quantity negative 4 squared minus negative 4 equals 16 plus 4, which is 20. So none of our answer choices. But wait, we have another solution to try. Remember that x can be either negative 4 or 3. So let's try x equals 3. Then we get 3 squared minus 3, which is 6. So our answer is C. Now let's review another couple of facts about quadratic equations. Remember that when we square the quantity x plus y, we get x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. And when we square the quantity x minus y, we get x squared minus 2xy plus y squared. Do you remember how to factor two perfect squares subtracted from each other? The factors of x squared minus y squared is the quantity x minus y times the quantity x plus y. Let's look at this SAT problem that involves knowing the factored form of the difference of two perfect squares. If x squared minus y squared equals 32 and x plus y equals 8, what is x minus y? We don't have any answer choices, so this must be a grid in. First, underline the facts and circle the keywords of the question. Remember the factors of the difference of two squares x squared minus y squared is the quantity x minus y times the quantity x plus y. x squared minus y squared is 32, therefore the quantity x minus y times the quantity x plus y is also 32. Substituting 8 for the quantity x plus y, we can now find x minus y. Let's look at this expression and think, what times 8 equals 32? We know that 4 times 8 equals 32, so x minus y must equal 4. If we didn't remember that 4 times 8 equals 32, we could always set up an equation to solve for x minus y. Either way, we have found that x minus y equals 4. Fill in the answer and you're done. No need to solve for x. Now give yourself a round of dignified applause for hanging in there like a champ. All right, we just covered the basic skills for solving quadratic formulas that you'll definitely need for similar problems on the SAT. We're going to finish up this lesson with a pause and solve. We'll take a look at the problem, then you can pause the video and work it out on your own. We'll go through it together once you're done and have restarted the video. If a minus b times a plus b equals 6 and a squared equals 8, what is the value of b squared? The answer choices are a, negative 2, b, the square root of 2, c, 2, and d, 10. All right, it's up to you now. Ready, set, pause. Okay, how was that? Let's work through this problem together and make sure you know how to find the right answer. First things first. Let's underline the facts, circle the key terms, and label the answer choices. Now, do you remember we talked about perfect squares earlier in this lesson? x squared minus y squared equals x minus y times x plus y. The same rule works in reverse. So x minus y times x plus y equals x squared minus y squared. How does that help us? Well, replace the x and y with a and b, and we have the same setup for a perfect square. If you didn't see this perfect square setup, don't worry. You could have foiled a minus b times a plus b, and you would have gotten the same result. Moving on, we know that a minus b times a plus b equals 6, so we know 6 equals a squared minus b squared. The question tells us that a squared equals 8, so let's replace the a squared in our equation with 8 to get 6 equals 8 minus b squared. We're looking to solve for positive b squared, so let's add b squared to both sides to get 6 plus b squared equals 8. Subtract 6 from both sides and we get b squared equals 2, which is answer choice C. Nice work! And that's a wrap! 
It was a lot of work, but we've learned the basic skills that you'll need to know for quadratic formulas on the SAT. But learning is only half the battle. Now try practicing some problems to truly master quadratic equations.